What's up everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna go over my Be Cool Conditional Repricing Rules. So if you're new to the channel, my name is Joji Davenport. I'm a high school chemistry teacher and a six-figure Amazon FBA bookseller. So if you're ready to get started, let's dive right in. All right, so I'm over here on Be Cool right here, Repricing Central. You can see that over the last month, I've sold about $20,000 worth of books. That's 239 orders. And the buy box phone percentage on that has been 48%. So Be Cool is basically a repricer. The goal is to help you win the buy box, is to help you get more sales. And it does that by incrementally changing the price of your products so that you don't manually always have to go change the price of your book, you know, change it by 20 cents, by a dollar, five dollars or whatever like that. So what I'm gonna do is first come over here to the listings and click the active listings because I kind of wanna just show you how it generally works before we actually get into setting everything up. So the first thing that you're gonna notice over here is that you're gonna have your rule, whether or not it's paused or actually active. You're gonna have the status. You're also gonna have the title of the book, the ASIN, and then you're gonna have a cost, a min, a max price, and then you're also gonna have a rule assigned to it. So what I'm gonna do here is let's just go over some of these books that I need to put into Be Cool here and that I need to set up my minute max prices for. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this link to the Amazon webpage here. So this is a Lost Fish anthology of the work. And so this is a book that I bought on Amazon to flip back on Amazon. You can see I bought this book over here on May 31st. We actually bought that from Worlds of Book USA for $12.62 after shipping $18.61. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is come back here to Be Cool and I'm gonna type in the buy costs of the item, right? We wanna know what do we actually buy our product for because then that's gonna help us with our minute or max price. For setting these minute max prices, basically, and we'll get into this a little bit later, but we're going to have our repricer change the price of our book in response to other competitors, other FBA sellers that are in the buy box. And our min and max price are going to be our boundaries. So we really don't want our books to be to go below a certain amount or go above a certain amount. We want them to be in a nice selling range that we're happy with. So the way that you get to determine your min and max price, or at least the way that I do it is by looking at the Keepa graph. So first you can see when I bought this book, like obviously I bought it right here at this big dip. So I was using Keepa deals probably. Price of this book dropped from 50 bucks down to 1262. The reason why I decided to pick this book up is because you can see multiple sales rank drops from this book is significantly over that price. Like here's sales rank drops at 40, here's sales rank drops of 70 plus. So my thought process here with the min price is to set a price that this book should definitely be able to sell at and still sell profitably. So for me, I'm thinking right around like 45 to 55 is probably going to be a good min price because that seems to be kind of the lowest price that this book actually sells at pretty consistently. So I'm going to, let's just go in the middle. I'm going to say, let's set the min price at $50 here. And what's really cool is you can go, go ahead now and click this little calculator button. It's to show you all the different fees associated with selling this product, also your profit margin and such. So, you know, if I bought this for $18.61 and sold it for $50, the estimated profit would be about $14.60, and that would be a 78% ROI. Now, I also want to set a max price. So I'm going to go back to the Keep It Chart now and figure out, well, what is sort of the highest I think this book could reasonably sell for? And so I think, you know, looking at these sales rank drops here when the price is right around 75, that seems to be a pretty good max price. Now, of course, we could also click this little buy box use button here and you can actually see that the buy box price at one point was up to $499. I highly doubt that that person actually sold their copy there, but nonetheless, it has been that high. But what I would say is that probably we should go a little bit above that lowest use price uh, when it is at its highest peak. So, you know, if we think maybe there's a sell of 75, usually there's a little bit of a prime gap. So maybe we can go up to like 85 or 89.99. So, you know, I want to sell my books. I don't want to have an insanely high max price. So let's just go to like $85 is the max price. And then I'm going to go in and click the save button. And now you're going to see that repricing is enabled. And that means when we look at my different settings here in a second, basically the price of my book is going to change between the min and max price in order to win the buy box. So one thing that's actually important to know right now is that if you look over here on the right, the buy box is actually a merchant seller. And the reason I know it's, a, it's an FBM seller is because there is actually shipping attached to it. And there's actually only one used offer right now on this listing. So if I were to come on the listing, I'd be the only prime seller. And it also is very likely that this person is going to sell out somewhat soon because I mean, this book just did sell about what this about a week ago for about $50 as well. So it's very likely that this person's gonna sell out and now I'm gonna be the only one on the listing. All right, let's go over maybe one more and then we'll dive into the rules and how you can actually set them up. Okay, so this next book is The Exercise Professional's Guide to Personal Something. Let's go ahead and open it up here on Amazon. You can see I bought this on June 16th. It actually I've sold this book before in the past and that's the reason why I bought it somewhat recently. So what I'm gonna do is go over to Seller Ramp and click this orders button. And what you can see on this page here is that I've actually sold this book multiple times. So I sold it two weeks ago for $175 actually. I've uh, sold it over here five months ago for $179.99. I also sold it one time for $225. Unfortunately, it got refunded and it had to get shipped back to me. But you know, I've sold this book for over $170 multiple times. So when I came back to this listing back in June, the price of this book is right around 70. And I felt like, okay, well, if I've sold this book multiple times for over $170, and that's actually a decent deal. At the time when I was looking at this book as well, you could actually see that the offer count was really not any higher than it's been in the past. So that also looked good. I was able to pick this copy up on June 16th. And you can see I bought it 
here for a total of $75.79. So now that we're back here in Be Cool, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put in our buy cost, $75.79. Now I'm gonna go ahead and select the min and the max price. Now, remember, I, I have actual real like evidence of selling this book for $179. So probably that price should be somewhere between my min and max price, right? But you know, I do also wanna sell books. So I don't necessarily need to sell it at $179 to make money. So maybe I can set my min price a little bit lower. Again, I would just look at the Keepa chart to figure out what is kind of the lowest use price that this book has sold at. And so it looks like this book could sell as low as 66. I mean, I, I've actually bought my 75, so it has been that low, but you know, this book regularly sells well about 100. I want my min price to still be profitable. So let's say, let's go and set a min price at like $135. And in that case, if we look at the calculator here, it looks like that would give us a profit of only $29 or 38% ROI. But again, that would be the worst case scenario. That'd be the min price there. And for the max price, I think what I'm gonna do is just go up to, you know, $189.99. I think that's a reasonable figure for what I've sold this book for in the past. And again, I want to stress that you probably don't want to be setting max prices too high because in the case that your listing actually gets set at the max price, if it's too unrealistic, then your book's just not ever going to sell. We're in the business of flipping books and selling books as fast as possible. And especially for me, if I'm selling books that have a lot higher sales ranks and don't sell as quickly, I do want to be somewhat competitive with my price. I don't want to be necessarily price gouging because I want my inventory to move. Now, what you can see is that the rules for all these are the inventory age conditional repricing. So what we need to do is actually jump into those rules. I'll show you the ones that I have set up and we'll go from there. Okay, so the first thing that you can do is come up here to the repricing rules and go and click that button. You can see they have all these different AI roles here. And then they have another one, which is called the inventory age condition. That's one that I created from their template. And then also have the Joji's profit rule. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is the inventory age conditional repricing rule setup. And then I'll show you the Joji's profit rule. So the way that you would make this is click the add new rule here at the top. Now you have a couple options. You can do the AI power, the rule base or the conditional repricing. Now, specifically here, we're doing conditional repricing. So you would click that button and then you have all these different options to choose from. And again, the one that I think is probably most relevant to booksellers is the inventory age condition because books are really heavy. You know, we don't want to be racking up long trip storage fees. We want to get books moving, especially if they've been there for a while, like six months, nine months, a year. We want to get them out. So you're going to go and click on that. You can give it a name and a description, and then you can go through the rest of things that you need to set up. All right, so let me go and show you exactly what mine looks like. We're going to click this inventory age conditions here. And when you scroll down to the bottom, you can see we have inventory age conditions. This says automatically switch repricing strategies based on FBA inventory age and other conditions. So I'm just going to go and click this next button just to show you what my rules uh, look like. Like. The first thing that you're going to notice down here is that this is set up by age, right? How old the book is. Now, what's important is I don't actually have conditional repricing rules set up for anything that is under three months old. So anything between zero and three months, I basically just have the Joji profit rule. And we're going to look at the Joji profit rule. It's just a rule based rule that I made on my own. And we'll look at that here in a second. But as soon as it gets past 91 days, as soon as it gets three months or older, then all of a sudden I have these conditional repricing rules. And basically all that's going to do is change my ROI to a certain percentage in order to to try to get this book to sell more quickly. So what you can see here is that when this book gets 91 days or older, basically I'm gonna reset the min price. I'm gonna reset the ROI of the min price to 50%. That's gonna be the lowest. So a lot of times for books that I buy, the minimum ROI might be more than 50%. It might be like 100% because the book I got at a really great deal, the min price should be 100% ROI. Well, in this case, if that book doesn't sell in three months, this is gonna automatically change that minimum ROI to 50%. Now, once that book gets to six months or older, I've changed that ROI. ROI to 30%. And by the time it's got to nine months, I basically said 0%, which means at the nine month cutoff, if this book still hasn't sold, I'm willing to just get break even for it, you know, just to get my money back. And if it goes beyond a year, I'm basically willing to go to negative 50%, in which case I'm basically throwing in the towel saying, if I can just get any money back, even if it's not profitable at all, in fact, even if it loses me money, just give me some capital back because I can use it elsewhere. So that's basically the way that I've set this up. I'm gonna go and click next. And then here on the final page, click save and finish. Now I do wanna go and walk you through the Joji's profit rule. This is actually a rule-based rule that I had made. So you can see up here that this says rule-based. Down here, the rule name is Joji's profit rule. This says compete for the buy box within my min and max price. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the next button here and let's go ahead and get started into these custom rules. So there's gonna be a lot here, bear with me. I'm gonna try to make this as simplistic as possible, go as quickly as possible. So feel free to pause, rewind and go back. So competitors, choose who you like to compete with when you're not in the buy box. So that means you're not in the buy box. What do you want to happen? Well. I'm gonna compete with the lowest price as long as that competitor is either Amazon or an FBA seller, but not an FBM seller. Okay, so I'm only competing against Amazon or FBA sellers. This says set my seller fulfilled prime offers as FBM. I'm not a seller fulfilled uh, prime seller. 
So I'm just going to say set that to FBM. This says set the competitor seller fulfilled prime offers also to FBM. So if you don't know what seller fulfilled prime is, basically some people, if they have their own warehouse and they're shipping books out and they do so at a comparable speed to what Amazon Prime would do, then they get this little badge that says they're now a seller fulfilled prime. So they're kind of like they're offering a prime shipping, even though they're not. It's kind of a weird thing, but it doesn't matter. I just have them set to FBM here. Now, there's so many different things that you could include here, and I basically exclude almost everything. But if you want to exclude a certain seller, like let's say you don't want to reprice against rent you or Apex Media, then you can actually grab their little seller ID tag from the URL of their storefront, and then you can plug it in there. Let's say you also want to exclude people who have like really poor feedback, you could do that. You want to exclude people who have like less than three feedback, you can do that. I just try to make this as simplistic as possible. I just have all that stuff up. I have set the item condition you like to compete against to, to use, right? I'm selling used books, so I'm going to compete against used sellers. Now, interestingly, I'm going to go ahead and compete against every condition. So even if mine's very good, if the person that buy a box is acceptable and they're within my minimax price, I'm still going to compete with it. Okay, click this next button. All right, so get the buy box. When you're not in the buy box or stay in the buy box setting has been disabled, these are the settings that will be used. If you're not in the buy box, but there's competition between that min price and the max price that we set, then here's what's gonna happen. If the competitor is above your minimum price, then what you're gonna do is just set your price to their price. And what I have it set to is minus two cents. So in other words, I'm gonna undercut them by two cents. If you wanna just match the buy box at zero, that's fine. I know a lot of people are probably gonna comment down below like, Joji, you're price taking, you're price taking. At the end of the day, my min price is very profitable. My max price is very profitable. So to me, I don't really care where I sell the book at. I just wanna sell the book because I know that either way I'm gonna make money. So for me, it is a little bit of a competitive advantage to undercut by a few cents because I think it's a little bit more likely that you're gonna win the buy box. Now, again, that's just my own opinion about it. If you think differently, let me know down in the comments below. I'd, be, I'd love to hear what you think about that. But I have it set to uh, two cents below their price. If the competitor is below my min price though, so like let's say my min price is $45 as a prime seller and then they're at 38, so they're below my price, then basically I'm gonna use auto compete. And what that means is the next lowest prime seller in, like within the min and max price, that's who I'm gonna compete with. So like, let's say the first FBA seller is at 38 and my min price is 45. And the second FBA seller, who's also lower than me is at, let's say 47, then I'm going to compete with them at the 47 minus two cents. Now, when the competitor equals the min price, same thing, we're gonna use auto compete. Now, if competition is found outside the min and max, so either you know below it or above it, so if, if they're above the max price, then I'm just gonna default mine to the max price. So for example, let's say I set my min price at 45, my max price at 75, and there's only one other prime sell on the listing, they're 85, that's above my max price. My price is just gonna go to 75. It's just gonna be, gonna be my max price. When competitors are below the min price, then I'm just gonna also set my price to the max price. So what this means is, like let's say there's only one FBA offer. If my min price was 45 and they're below that, I'm not going to just automatically set my price to my min price. I'm actually Actually get to keep it at the max price and wait for other sellers to come within my min and max price and then compete for, with them using auto compete or competing for the buy box in that that case when all competitors are below the min price and above the max price i'm also just going to use the max price so it gets very complicated as you can see feel free just to copy these settings if you want by no means am i saying they're perfect or that they're the best this is just the settings that i'm using competition not found when you are the only seller then use the max price in other words there's no FBA prime sellers. Let's go back to this fish anthology book, right? There's gonna be no FBA sellers. So in this case, I'm just gonna be going to my max price. And I can't remember what we set for a max price. I think it was 85. So basically my max price is gonna be $85 there. When competitors are excluded by your settings, I also just use the max price. So you can see everything for me, like if something's crazy going on, I just default to the max price basically. Now, if you wanna have a price change safety net, feel free to do that. Basically, if your price, if the price of your book is going to change by over a certain percentage and you don't want it to change by that much, then you can actually limit how much your price actually is going to fall by. In other words, if Be Cool wants to drop your price by 50% based upon the rules you have set up, you could have a safety net that says, actually, hold on. I don't want any price, one time price to be below 10%. You could do that if you want. And you'd have that on. Again, I have mine off because I have my min and max price. They're both profitable. I don't really care where it where this thing sells for in between the min and the max price. When the adjusted price equals or is below the min price, then we're just gonna go in and use the max price as well. In these advanced settings, you can compete against Amazon FBA, FBM. We already kind of did that. 
So I don't have anything, any of those things on because we just did that. So I'm gonna go to next year. Now, when we're actually in the buy box, what do we want to happen? So when we're in the buy box, this is the only setting that's gonna be used. And I actually have disabled buy box setting. So what this means is I'm only gonna be competing against Amazon or FBA, but when we're in the buy box, I don't want be cool to do anything else. Stop. Like you could have it try to raise your buy box price to maximize profit. But for me, it's like, if I'm in the buy box, I'm happy. I just wanna be in the buy box, that's it. I wanna be the little yellow button, add to cart button. And as long as I'm in the buy box, I'm saying be cool, do nothing. Just let it be. Now, again, you could have another price change safety net here if you want to. I don't have that enabled. Now, the other really, really interesting thing about this is you could have a fixed schedule or a PETA schedule where you pause repricing. So a lot of other people in the business, they say that maybe it's a good idea not to do repricing between the hours of, let's say, midnight or 8 a.m. because fundamentally all repricing, the goal is to lower the price, right? It's to get the prices coming down. So if you can pause repricing for eight hours out of the day or a third of the day, then maybe you kind of prevent some of that price thing. Again, for me, I haven't really played with it, although maybe it'd be helpful. But again, my min and max prices are both profitable. So to me, it doesn't really matter too much. Okay, so I'm gonna have that off. Go ahead and click this next button here. So that's basically Joji's profit rule. I'm gonna click save and finish. And you're gonna see that you have 4,000, right now I have 4,052 items that are with uh, Joji's profit rule. Of course, that's not how many books I have in inventory. That's basically all the books that I've had listed. A lot of those have already sold and so on. And then you can see I have 29 books right now with the inventory age conditions. That's because in order to use conditional repricing rules, you actually have to pay for the AI plan. So that's something that I'm gonna do next so that I can actually set up my inventory age conditions. And the reason why I say that is because right now, like one of the biggest issues in my business are the books that are still in my inventory after nine months or after a year. I still have like a hundred books in my inventory right now that are like over a year old. Now, the good thing is, you know, all the books that I've already sold have made me very profitable. And even if those other hundred books that are over a year old don't sell, or even if I make zero dollars off them, if they just disappeared, I would still be very profitable. So, you know, I was looking at my numbers last year, about 80% of the books that I bought sold within uh, within a year period of time. So what I need to do is figure out what to do with these books that have been sitting along for a while. So that's why I'm gonna go and switch this conditional repricing rule setup. So I hope you really enjoyed it. And by the way, I don't know if anyone noticed, I'm wearing the Be Cool merch. So I had an interview with Samuel, uh, it was really awesome to to get to talk to him, talk about be cool, how to set up, you know, conditional repricing rules. So, you know, he sent me a t-shirt for hanging out with him. Now I get this awesome Nike dry fit to wear around a really cool show. Hope you enjoyed this video here. If you did, leave some comments down below. Did I reprice correctly, incorrectly? Um, let me know because I'm really honestly interested to see what everyone else is doing. So that's all I got for you today. I really hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.